Hi there, Jan Sverre here again. Um, I have some projects on the my first side again. In this um, frame you'll see the ML7 I'm working on and then I also have some Super 7s uh, in the process. Today's project is uh, a repair and modification of the Myfern ML7 tailstock. This is a bit special uh, versus normal tailstocks in that it has uh, this one annoying feature and then one lack of a common feature. The last is of course the ejection or the self ejection system found on uh, most um, tailstocks, whereas you wind out the um, tailstock again, it self ejects the tool, hitting the bottom of the tang, of course, on a, on a tapered tool, it ejects it. This has not some feature like this, so I will introduce that. And then the second thing is this annoying um, problem that occurs when you wind out the tailstock, and then it, the the screw here, which is integral with the with the barrel, it uh, comes it interferes with the action, so to speak. So I have a friend that made a very clever modification where he extended the um, the barrel. Uh, this one so that it the winding action then is out here but then of course then that was just uh, the barrel being extended by a tube and then fixed to this handle and um, also rotating with the handle it kept the action so to speak the knot in here anyway so i will try to replicate that and um, my whole initial um, problem was that of course, just knowing this design uh, here, you have this screw integral with the barrel and the nut integral with the handle. You also have, a, which I have machined off, a um, bronze bearing at the rear here, or the left side, which is then uh, to the left of this slot and you fixate this system with the a half washer like so. My problem was that uh, the slot uh, here had been become uh, worn. I mean the the bronze bearing has uh, worn out was worn out so that it became sloppy. It's a little bit sloppy still but the problem was that you had too much end play or slot there. So um, I will fix that. I have thought about introducing a um, system where you have um, a thrust bearing inside here, but because it's not enough room really for this type, and then it also requires maybe machining out a different diameter, I want to avoid that. So I think I will reintroduce the, the bronze bearing. Um, but of course then with the extended tube, so that this becomes more like um, so and do the bronze bearing in there on the original nut which I will have to machine off here. If I want to retain this I'm not sure this is uh, you see the the finish is off anyway but if I retain it of course I'll uh, just machine that flat and then introduce that to the to the barrel here which I'm making. So that's the project of today. So here is the normal situation for me. Cheating out as much as possible or trying to figure out the easiest way <coughs> to make this um, modification. And then cut the old thread uh, which was integral with the handle because I don't want that anyway. So that this can be used here and just glued on a piece of bronze which I will make a slot in to fit the old slot. But then um, of course the other way would be to make a thread. Of course if I'd been a real machinist I would have tempted this first of course namely to make a new knot. So I just made a trial effort here uh, and then I'll make in plastic and then I'll make it in, in bronze here afterwards. So I'll set up the correct gear train, namely, as it says here, 35 to 77, 35 to 77, 
and 127 to 40 127 to 40 then i'm over here at the, this is the per one inch so eight threads per inch this is e and it should be at seven so e and seven and of course here for thread cutting over at this here and of course now i think i can have it like this uh, and then uh, put the cover on again because i usually well <laughs> this is often uh, is equal seldom that i go do metric threads as i do imperial because <laughs> i hardly thread here anyway so i can uh, have it at uh, at feed anyway and that's only by this um this uh, rotary knob here that i select the correct feeds so it's uh, left hand threads uh, now if i do like so almost down there just have to engage like so and right hand threads and fast and, and slow according to the table here and then feed here like so and then of course to speed over the other down and stop and then I'm uh, setting here again like that and then I go like this and now that means another uh, 20 or 40 on the diameter hundreds of a millimeter So finally, I'm uh, through. Threads look okay. And they enter. That way, yes, left hand. Bit, bit sloppy. It's okay. And then I'll cut uh, the slot here, that's better. Instead of having it uh, glued together, and I'll have this in, in as a spare, I guess. This is the diameter that um, supposed to be here also. So now I've completed um, and uh, put it into place so the knot is held in this captive by this slot functions well and there is a little bit of slop that's okay i think and uh, my plan is just to to add on this uh, on the outside of this and then here of course so that we have this uh, um, system in order but I'll take the opportunity also to make another one of these where I have make this in, in one piece. Um, 
then just um, of course uh, not needing to thread the whole piece lengthwise I'll just bore out this uh, a little bit uh, wider here back here and then slot um, oh, the thread the first part here um, threading into a blind hole then like this and then I have to calculate the depth of course just to well, we'll see because I, then I can't see uh, as I did on the other one. Uh, I can't see the end of where the, the tool sticks out, of course. So I'll just have to calculate the length and then be a little bit more cautious. But I think this is an, a nice exercise also in, in threading. No, this is not a new contraption, just I turned it down this uh, uh, cylinder, uh, the relief of the threads here, to the size of this and just was smack on. I mean, really good fit. So, but this is really on this side. If I just use this here, I can show you. A little bit sloppy fit on the threads, I guess. Yeah, well, should be the same size. So this is uh, here now, um, the cylinder is um, like, just cut it at a bit short of 120 mil. So uh, inside here is a step, so the, this indicates how long I've cut the threads. So this is 87, so uh, call it 90 then, that leaves about 30mm yeah, little shy of 30 millimeter for the thread section, the threaded section, so about uh, the same as the old one. To make the stop, um, I will insert a 10 mil um, threaded rod here in this plug. Just cut it off here, and this plug will go into the threaded uh, back part of this uh, well tube, so to speak. So this is my end result here, with the tube being inserted into the back rear of the tailstock, uh, secured in this slot here and rotating around and then the threaded rod here will be uh, adjusted in length so that it will be functional as a um, ejector tool so i made this uh, plug that i threaded in and uh, then this sits and then i have threaded the inside for an m10 nut no uh, screw bolt whatever this will be then just adjusted to length so to function as a uh, ejector tool inside here and to find the length of the ejector tool i'm just uh, setting the tape stock where it should be just temporarily fasten it like this so and then uh, adjusting this to where i want to stop Threading in this here, see it ejected, so I know it's there. Okay, and then it's just a matter of adjusting the uh, fastening knot on each side, maybe just on this side, but at least a knot so that this rod will be firmly, let's say, located, seated. This uh, th threaded rod, I mean. So for those interested to do the same, uh, really a very, very simple modification to the uh, Myford ML7 tailstock. No changes to the barrel with the thread, of course, and this, and this, uh, this uh, washer or stop. Uh, just added uh, this as a, an extractor tool and this extension sleeve to be able to go all the way uh, with the uh, or not exposing the threaded portion here 
so that also then not interfering with the action, so to speak. This portion here is just um, the same as the original, which I have in this case also then glued to a piece of bearing bronze. Also made up a new one in bearing bronze. But then I thought, hmm, maybe I'll make it in one piece. So this is brass. But for this, I just silver soldered the original handle onto here because I had anyway cut it off. This was uh, this part uh, was originally here, so I cut off. Uh, when you silver solder such a part, because of heat dissipation, it's uh, preferential to, or benef it's beneficial to, let's say, thin the part. So I, hence I did this to be able to silver solder this onto here. And then of course the in the middle part here, that's just a portion that I have threaded in here, and also then pinned it in place actually, and uh, with the ML. No, with an M10 screw, so this functions as the extractor, of course, then in here. And I just have a secure, uh, a nylock nut to secure it there. Very easy to adjust the length so that you extract the, the tool. I think it's a very simple mod. Um, this is easily made, I mean. And the only thing was maybe the inter internal uh, threading here, but uh, it turned out to be no problem. So all in all, I think this was a very useful mod to be able to go all the way in and out without having to fight this um, the screw, the exposed screw. So just to extend the handle, bit of a slope, but not much. And then of course the ejector which is nice. I think it stops uh, here, yes. And this one is a tiny bit different on the um, on here. So you have to adjust the screw, the stop screw, so to speak. Maybe a little bit. This is better tang, I think, but it ejects. So all in all, very useful mod.